Barbara, let's go to you. In your mind, we have seen the evidence. What articles of impeachment do they support, if any? Well, I think you could very easily support articles of impeachment for three crimes, bribery, obstruction of justice, and abuse of power. Uh, on bribery, it's defined as demanding a thing of value in exchange for the performance of an official act. Here, I think demanding the investigations in exchange for releasing military aid in a White House meeting qualify, and there's su sufficient evidence for that. Obstruction of justice, to the extent Trump supporters are complaining that they need more evidence, uh, they need look no further than Trump himself. They've refused to produce other witnesses, witnesses like Mick Mulvaney, Mike Pompeo, all the documents that even Gordon Sondland said would have been really helpful to refresh his recollection about what happened. So I think obstruction of justice is quite easily satisfied. And then abuse of power. This is one that is not a crime on the books, but impeachable conduct. Inviting foreign interference into our elections is an abuse of the president's duty to take care that the laws be faithfully executed. And withholding military aid after our Congress voted to approve $400 million to fight off Russian aggression in Ukraine, harm not only Ukraine's national security, but American national security. And so I think there's a strong case for all three of those articles. Elise, Republicans have spent a ton of time justifying the president's actions by saying he was absolutely right to be suspicious of Ukraine. But I want to share what Dr. Fiona Hill said about that very point yesterday. Some of you on this committee appear to believe that Russia and its security services did not conduct a campaign against our country, and that perhaps, somehow, for some reason, Ukraine did. This is a fictional narrative that has been perpetrated and propagated by the Russian security services themselves. In the course of this investigation, I would ask that you please not promote politically driven falsehoods that so clearly advance Russian interests. She basically just said, brother, please. Do you think any yes. of that resonates with Republicans? Um, I don't. I don't. I mean, look, this is one of the foremost experts um, of Russia and Eastern Europe and Ukraine in the country. And she was before she agreed to join the White House. And, and why did she join to help President Trump navigate um, some of these issues on Russia and help with the Russian relationship? But you see Lindsey Graham now sending a letter uh, Senator Graham sending a letter to Secretary of State Pompeo looking for documents to prove that Ukraine interfered in the 2016 election. You can see that this is going to be the Republicans argument if when this goes to a Senate trial that President Trump was completely within his rights and duties as president because it was actually Ukraine uh, that interfered. But I mean, I, I think um, you know, all the other witnesses and, and the own uh, intelligence community report kind of bears out that this isn't true. Natasha, Dr. Hill also made a very interesting point that I want to be sure doesn't get overlooked about the Russian reasoning for interfering in the 2016 election. Take a look. The goal of the Russians was really to put whoever became the president by trying to tip their hands on one side of the scale under a cloud. So if Secretary, former First Lady, former Senator Clinton had been elected as president, as indeed many expected uh, in the run-up uh, to the election um, in 2016, she too would have had major questions about her legitimacy. And I think that you know, what we're seeing here as a result of uh, all of these narratives is uh, this is exactly what the Russian government was hoping for. Has that not gotten enough attention? Because if that's the case, if Russia just wanted to sow chaos and doubt and interfere with our election, with our democracy, then that could and maybe should get a lot of bipartisan support to stop it. Yeah, so what we saw from the social media campaign, of course, that the Russians waged in 2016 is that they were targeting both sides. They were trying to inflame tensions on both the left and the right in order to sow that chaos, in order to promote disinformation, discourage people from voting, all in the final you know, goal, for the final goal, really, of getting Americans disillusioned with the democratic process, right? Vladimir Putin had the ultimate goal of electing Donald Trump because he didn't want Hillary Clinton to be in office. But... Short of that, because no one really thought that Hillary, that Donald Trump was going to win, then short of that, an accomplishment for him would just be to show his own people that the American-style system is inferior to what the Russians have, for example. But what I also think Fiona's point here really underscores about her is the fact that she is so nonpartisan. 
This is someone who her colleagues don't even know what her political affiliations are. She managed to stay at the White House for over two years, even though she was not seen as a Trump loyalist, even though she really had had no good things to say about Trump during the election, because she kept her head down and because she was such a professional and people really respected her. John Bolton, when he came in, he was under a lot of pressure to fire her because there were some people in the White House who saw her as part of this deep state. She was a former National Intelligence Council officer. So there were there was a lot of forces in the White House that were trying to get rid of her, but ultimately they couldn't because they saw that she was just a consummate professional who was non-political, non-partisan. And I think that really shone through in her testimony. And that's part of the reason why it was so powerful. Then right there, Elise, John Bolton sent out a tweet this morning that was very cryptic, where he wrote, for the backstory, stay tuned. You know Bolton. You have traveled with him several times overseas. He keeps teasing whether it's private speeches or now this cryptic message that he's got some sort of ground, groundbreaking information. What, what, what is his style? What could this be? Well, look, I mean, John Bolton is nothing but a bureaucratic infighter, and, and what he's doing is kind of playing all sides here. You see that what he's done with the president, and he's not really challenging the White House argument that he shouldn't testify. He's trying to get the courts um, to figure it out. And when the Democrats said, you know, OK, no, thanks, John Bolton is dying to testify. I think he obviously he's felt very strongly about Russian interference. Um, you heard from Fiona Hill. Fiona Hill was really a proxy for John Bolton, for his frustration, for his, um, you know, kind of incredulousness at what Gordon Sondland was doing, trying to call what him and Rudy Giuliani were cooking up a drug deal. So I think his testimony could be very damning, um, but he's also kind of teasing it out. Uh, he wants to go through proper channels. I think he's also, you know, a constitutional expert. He wants the courts to decide. But make no mistake, John Bolton wants to testify. He wants to tell his story. And I don't think it would be very favorable for the president. Barbara, is it Bolton or are there any other cards that Democrats can play in the Senate that could change this dynamic? Well, you know, I think we need to keep in mind that there's two phases here, right? As you say, the Senate is where the trial is. Uh, are we ready to uh, vote on articles of impeachment? I think, yes. The question, this is like the uh, charging phase in a, a criminal case, grand jury. All you need is probable cause to believe that you are advancing to the next phase. And so in the next phase, that's where you can have additional witnesses like a John Bolton come testify. And so there with a subpoena, perhaps uh, he could be a powerful witness. But I don't think they need him at this phase. I think the time has come to call the question, as you would say, in parliamentary procedure, uh, vote on the articles of impeachment. There's absolutely probable cause to believe that the president has committed an impeachable offense. He should be impeached and then put it in the Senate. And at, at the Senate phase, these witnesses can be called. The president could call these witnesses. He has an opportunity to call his own witnesses. And so I think we'll hear from a broader uh, list of witnesses at the Senate phase and perhaps to include John Bolton. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.